Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. This is your tropical update for Saturday, June 15th. And Jeff, when we talked yesterday, we were looking at a 40% chance of development from the National Hurricane Center, from that area that we've been watching down in the Southwest Gulf. Shortly after we recorded the podcast, those odds were increased to 50%. What is the latest? Yeah, and we really haven't seen a lot of change uh, with that over the last 24 hours. So we're still at 50% for, for some sort of broad low to form down here, somewhere between the, the Yucatan and the eastern coast of Mexico, uh, really early next week. So we're kind of looking at that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Um, interestingly enough, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit, is uh, the models have sort of pulled back a little bit on development down here. But uh that definitely doesn't mean we won't see some impacts. We're, we're definitely looking at the potential for impacts uh, along the Gulf Coast and the Mexican coast, obviously, as we go into uh, next week. Yeah, and um, as far as rainfall, and, and yeah, just like you said, we, we saw a pretty strong signal in the Bay of Campeche yesterday. That's kind of gone away, uh, although that, that moisture moving in a little bit more, talking about that that moisture in the eastern gulf sort of swinging around to the western gulf we're maybe seeing a little bit of that here um and yeah as far as rain impacts uh, pretty sharp gradient still between coastal areas and, and areas further inland and uh, i know we're going to be showing that here in a, in a minute yeah so you can kind of see this this kind of trough axis, if you will, old frontal system that lays across Florida down towards the Yucatan. You know, we've been talking about this all week. Um, then you have this kind of monsoon trough down here further to the south, west, southwestern Caribbean. And, you know, if you use your imagination a little bit, you can you can kind of see a, a very broad spin here. And this is what we, we, we've been talking about. There's this broad trough, this broad circulation over Central America and the Yucatan. And this is just going to slowly move out to the West Northwest and to the Southern Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche. And one of the reasons why we might be seeing the models pull back a little bit, and this is the European, so this is for next Wednesday uh, afternoon. You can see it, it has a very weak reflection down here, uh, more of a trough extending off to the North. But one of the issues that we may be seeing with this, the, the kind of, holds back development everything looks very favorable the wind the upper winds look good obviously the sea surface temperatures are warm enough lots of moisture but a lot of times these big broad circulations have a hard time consolidating down into a into an actual surface low pressure and so that that may be what the is starting to show up here a little bit instead of getting an actual defined or well-defined surface low it, we're just going to keep with this very broad circulation that kind of moves up towards the northeastern coast of Mexico. So you can kind of see that here in the European. It still closes off a, a, a very weak system. Uh, the GFS may be a little bit more defined. Um, but two things to point out. One is a lot of the impacts are well to the north. So we're going to get this big surge of moisture up here on the Texas, Louisiana coast. As we get into late Sunday, so like Sunday night and into Monday now. So it's it's the whole system is kind of slowed down a little bit. And we get this big surge of moisture and you can see here on the GFS again, a lot of the impacts well off to the north. So it's it's almost irrelevant at this point if this if this really forms, if you know, if it becomes a tropical repression or a weak tropical storm and gets a name and goes into eastern Mexico here. It, it really is not going to make any difference on what we're going to experience up here along the Texas coast. And you kind of mentioned the, the rainfall aspect, and, and I usually don't show or get too excited about deterministic uh, guidance and, and when, when it comes to rainfall. Um, but this is the European model, and I'm just showing it as, as kind of an example of notice that, you know, if we do get some surface low down here on the eastern coast of Mexico, but notice where the models are kind of painting all of the heavy rainfall, you know, well off to the east and northeast, so central, southern Louisiana coast, the upper Texas coast, maybe back around the Matagorda Bay, you know, not down here where we have the actual surface circulation if something were to develop. And this is very common of western Gulf of Mexico tropical systems and, and especially these kind of trough 
trophy type systems that are that are very elongated as you have the impacts well away hundreds of miles sometimes away from where any sort of center may form and so i i just kind of you know put this up here to show i wouldn't get tied to oh it looks like it's going to rain a lot of galveston that's that's not what we're saying here it's just this is kind of the trend of well away from the center you get the heavier rains the gustier winds um, and, and that's something we, I, I don't think we've really talked a whole lot about is, you know, we're going to have high pressure building here over the Southeast United States this weekend. Pressure's lowering down here in the Southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So right between those two here in the Northwestern Gulf, coastal Louisiana, coastal Texas, that's going to tighten that pressure gradient up. So we're going to see the winds start to pick up out of the Southeast. By early next week, you know, 15 to 20 miles an hour inland, that's just a breezy day, no big deal. But down along the coast, we could see some 20 to 30, maybe even 35 mile per hour winds as we get into the early next week. And so breezy, gusty, windy down along the coast. And we'll kind of segue in here now uh, to some of the impacts. And so this is what I showed you was the model, the European model for rainfall. This is what the forecasters are thinking. So you take all of the model data you have and you put it together as an actual forecast, not using any particular run. And this is this is why we keep saying, you know, you gotta be careful using any particular deterministic runs. The other thing I'll say is we're still way out in time here where, you know, three, four days out from the heavy rains um, that we're having to use the global model guidance. We're not in the range yet of our more specific high resolution uh, guidance that may give us a little bit better idea of where and when some of the heaviest rains uh, potentially could fall. But as you mentioned, pretty strong gradient between potentially a lot of rain along the coast. And I mean, if you look at this, the bullseye here is, is tending to be over south central Louisiana, southwest Louisiana, and then back towards the Matagorda Bay. So really, if you're kind of looking at a general idea, general area now, Vermilion Bay, south central Louisiana, over to Matagorda Bay, in Central Texas is, is kind of where we're looking at maybe some of the higher totals right now. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't discount some some decent rains, especially if we get an actual surface low uh, down along that lower Texas coast in the Rio Grande Valley. So we're, this is area is extremely vulnerable to flooding and heavy rainfall. So definitely watching this area here. But you can see that that it's a pretty sharp gradient, you know, four or five, six inches right along the beaches and the coast. Uh, you go up to Highway 105, and you may only be talking an inch or so of rain. And this is this is over the next five to seven days. I do think a lot of this comes as we get into that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time period. So while this is spread out, while this is over that five to seven day period, I think most of this is going to fall in, in the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday period. Um, a little bit later in the week toward, toward the west out here as all this kind of pushes westward over time. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at for the rainfall. We did get a couple questions yesterday about, you know, the Brazos River is high. How does how does this affect uh, the rivers, the Trinity and the Brazos? They're high from the, the spring runoff and all that type of stuff. And really, if you look at this, this is this is really coastal. And so I, I would not anticipate a lot of significant uh, river issues with this falling on the coastal area. Now, if we started to see uh, bigger rainfall totals further inland on the on the Brazos Basin, up around College Station or Hempstead or or, or Waco, that is when I would be more concerned for the rivers. Um, but this really, just based on what we have right now, this really isn't a big river flood concern for at least Southeast Texas. Uh, coastal bend area, maybe down toward the Corpus area, uh, you do have some smaller rivers, the Aransas River, uh, and some of the smaller creeks down here around Corpus Christi that could get elevated if we if we see these totals verified down on the mid coast. But right now, I wouldn't be overly worried about the rivers. I think the biggest issue potentially mid next week is if we get some of those really heavy rainfall rates, those tropical rainfall rates that we can get from time to time. If we get that. Um, you can see some localized flooding, so the street flooding and, and maybe some rises on the local creeks and bayous, but overly not not too worried about the rivers. Yeah, as we talked about before, Jeff, this is typical for, especially for June uh, tropical development, that we get a lot of disorganized systems. So what it does is it basically throws out that precipitation, that convection, especially to the north and northeast with that 
with that uh, cyclonic flow and, and circulation, but it's very broad. And so that's why it's important to stay in touch daily because these these models, these these predictions on rainfall amounts, especially especially with a tight gradient, uh, can change all all the time from day to day. So it's important to keep keep up with it daily. And of course, we've got Father's Day tomorrow. People may be going to the beach. It's not a bad day to go to the beach. We're expecting sunny skies today. It's going to be warm. It's going to be in the mid nineties. Heat index in the low one hundreds. Still a good day to be at the beach. And if we do get any rain on Sunday. It likely the, the better chances are in the afternoon, but we are seeing some coastal impacts. In fact, the latest models we're seeing maybe a, a little bit more aggressive uh, coastal impacts than we've seen since our last podcast. Yeah, so yeah, if you're going to the beach tomorrow, you're not going to have really any issues, one to two feet on the seas and, and, and no big problems with riptides or anything like that. So go at it, have it, enjoy it. Uh, things really start to change as we get into Monday and especially Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, again, the winds pick up. We get a big fetch across the Gulf of Mexico that's going to drive the water towards the upper Texas coast. And so even though this says the time is 5 a.m. this morning, this is uh, for Tuesday and into Wednesday. And you can see uh, this is tide level. So this is this is the tide forecast plus uh, the water level rise, which will result from the wind forcing and even some of the wave action that comes up toward the coast. And this is kind of the mean. So this is probably a good average idea of what we could get anywhere from three to four feet of water level rise along the upper Texas coast. So, uh, you know, Matagorda Bay down here, we have Galveston Bay. This is Louisiana State Line. And kind of zooming out a little bit, you can see this is up here in this concave portion of the northwest Gulf of Mexico, southwest Louisiana, in the upper Texas coast, where with an east-southeast or southeast wind, we kind of trap those higher water levels up in this portion of the Gulf of Mexico. So three to four feet's not too bad. You know, there'll be some uh, issues along the beachfront. You know, you can get some waves and water levels up to the, the base of the dunes. Um, but there is some indications that we could go a little bit higher than that, um, possibly even up around four and a half to five feet. So this is the plot for Galveston Pleasure Pier. And you can see here as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, there is the potential on the higher end to go up around four and a half to five feet. Um, and four and a half feet is kind of the threshold uh, here in southeast Texas where we start to see minor impacts and you know when we talk about minor impacts you your beach access areas may have some overwash could get some some wave action or some debris up on highway 87 over there on bolivar around rollover um in west end of galveston island blue water highway surfside down in Brazoria county quintana beach they could have some some higher than normal tides or some water at high tides and then in Galveston Bay around San Leon and Seabrook, Toddville Road, the Shore Acres area, up towards the Lynchburg Ferry Monument Inn area. Um, you know, this is probably tidal impacts we get three or four times a year around here. I'm not looking at anything substantial, but again, we'll have to keep an eye on this because the wave action can play a role in this. We're talking, you know, eight to 10 feet waves in the Gulf of Mexico, the Northwest Gulf by mid next week. You know, that big volume of water coming up with those waves can kind of sometimes hold that water near the coast and, and kind of increase the tides a little bit. The other thing is this is a multi-day kind of event. And so you can kind of get these high tides trapped near the coast uh, with the wave action and the wind forcing that's not allowing that tide to drain back out during low tide. And what happens in those situations, you just kind of keep building on it over time. And so you, you can get up into issues um, as you get into the longer this goes on. And, and we've seen that before around the upper Texas coast with kind of weak tropical systems. It doesn't take a whole lot, but if you do it over time and you keep putting the water into the bays and, and the inlets and the, and the beaches over time, you can elevate those tides over time. And so that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on next week. I think, um, you know, some minor issues are certainly possible. It's not going to be, you know, great to go down to the beach starting uh, Monday may be okay. Monday may be decent, but definitely Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are not going to be days you want to be down there in the water. Very rough surf, hazardous surf conditions, high rip current conditions, and very hazardous marine conditions. So we're talking, you know, 25, 35 mile an hour winds across the bays and the offshore, nearshore waters, uh, big seas, big swells. 
squally weather, low visibility. It's just not going to be uh, good uh, next week for a lot of coastal activities. You know, anything that you do out in the waters. Uh, and if you do have things planned, you need to take a look at that and, uh, um, you know, possibly have a backup plan or, or, or cancellation on those types of things. You don't want to be out there in small craft and everything like that with, with the weather we have coming. Um, and so that's that's kind of what we're looking at. We'll, we'll, we're going to keep an eye on this. Um, this may end up with the rainfall being sort of the bigger impacts we have up here um, on the upper Texas coast. Jeff, thank you very much. We'd like to remind everybody to subscribe and share our Weather Insights YouTube podcast by clicking on the link and keep up to date with all the latest going on in the tropics. And we'll see you on the next Weather Insights podcast.